OK, so um, I'm here to tell you about uh, data transfer and access here at NERSC, how you get data in and out of our systems. If you have a bunch of data sitting on remote machines, you want to bring them into NERSC. If you have data over here that you want to share with your collaborators, move it to other machines. Um, that you know, Science is a big shared enterprise, and so we all want to collectively be able to make sure that data can live on the systems where it's most needed. So I'm going to tell you about all the different ways you can get data in and out of here. Um, so we'll start with the data transfer nodes. So these are some dedicated sys uh, nodes where you can move data in and out of NERSC. And primarily, these are configured to use things like Globus and Grid FTP, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what, what's really going on here is that these are servers that are tuned for high bandwidth network uh, transfers and for doing these very efficiently. So they have things like buffer sizes tuned and their network interfaces are hooked up directly to ESNet, so you're getting the full bandwidth there. Um, and we actually monitor the performance of these transfers uh, between us and other sites to make sure that things are actually performing. Um, the other useful thing here is that these nodes actually have direct access to the big file systems at NERSC, including the Cori Scratch file system. So you can directly move things onto the file system or move it off of the file system that's running on the Cori system. So it's, it's um, unlike some other systems which may or may not have access to all the file systems, this one really does have access to everything. So um, these are nodes that are DTN XX, so the XX is the, f uh, there's, there's 1 through 12, I believe. So you can log into any of them. Is it 1 through 12 or 1 through 8? What do we make? Yeah, OK. 1 through 12. Um, I know there's 1 through 8, but um, yeah, you log into one of those nodes. Um, again, you go through Globus, and that hides that for you to some extent. But, but you can move data in and out of these at uh, a fairly high rate. All right, uh, the other thing I should note, this is also a useful way to move data between systems at NERSC. So if you want to move things to the HPSS system, again, it's got a pretty uh, heavy duty pipe between the file systems and HPSS. So you can use tools like HSI or Globus to move between systems within NERSC as well. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about Globus and most of this. I, I, I have a demo, so it'll be easier to just show you guys what we're doing here. Um, but this is probably the easiest way to move data in and out of NERSC. It's reliable. It's easy to use. Um, it's basically a web interface where you drag and drop files around. And um, the nice thing is it actually is a managed transfer. So it's essentially automated, which means if you move a folder, It'll move everything in the folder for you, keep track of what you've moved, what you've not done. If something fails, it'll retry it. Um, at the end of the transfer, it'll tell you, oh, these files were moved successfully, these files were not. Um, and, and so it's a much better way to kind of fire and forget. You set off the transfer, and then you go off and do your own thing. You don't have to keep something running on your terminal or anything like that. It's just a managed inter in a transfer interface. Um, there's extensive documentation. They also have a REST API, so you can script your own clients around this. So if you, if you didn't want to use the web interface and you wanted to, you had a web service that you wanted to have data movement, uh, some sort of data brokering going on in the background, you can write a REST tool that will basically talk to the API and move stuff for you. All right, so we've got a bunch of different endpoints. Most of this is actually no longer valid because we don't have NSN or PDSF anymore. So you should just use the NERSC DTN nodes and the NERSC Cori nodes. Um, I'm not even sure if we're telling people to use DTN JGI, but I think we still have that. So if you're a JGI user, you could use the DTN JGI node. But I, I think at this point, you just want to use NERSC DTN, maybe use NERSC Cori. But um, beyond that, I think a lot of these are obsolete at this point. All right. So let's skip past this. Actually, you know what? I think I'm. Let's do the quick demo now. Um, all right, so this is what Globus looks like. You log in. Um, it takes you to a login screen, which includes your NERSC. And you just pick NERSC in your organization. Um, you continue. 
it'll ask you for a username and password. Um, so you log in with your username and password, and it takes you to this interface. So here you'll start by just typing in the name of your endpoint. In this case, we'll just start by typing in NERSC, see what shows up. There's a bunch of endpoints. Really, I think you mostly want to do stuff with NERSC DTN. That's the data transfer node. And it's my home file system shows up here. And let's say I wanted to move data from here to NERSC HPSS. And I'll bring that up. And then the HPSS file system shows up here. Um, and then I can say, oh, I want this um, one of these folders. Let's pick something. There's an animals folder I have here, which just has a bunch of animals in there. Um, so I'm just going to pick that folder. And I'm going to say, go ahead and hang on. And I'm going to want to move that folder across. So somewhere here, there should be an actual transfer arrow, which I'm totally not seeing anymore, which is, am I missing something here? Here, let's try it again. Yeah, I could do that. Nope. Hang on, let me reload the app, because there's actually just a little button that says transfer. And so, yeah, that, that's what I was looking for, this little start button. So I guess the JavaScript didn't completely load. Anyway, so yeah, you just pick a file, and then you push start, and it moves the data. Um, or I pick a folder, and you push start. And it moves the data. And you can look at your transfer itself. So you have an event log that captures all the activity. So it says, oh, something went wrong. The verification failed. Um, but yeah, so the, the point here is that this is sort of your, so this is your managed transfer option. So I'm going to say, don't verify this. Just do the sync. So there's, there's all sorts of options for your transfer that you can run with um, to make this easier. The other thing you can also do, oh, so I'm, I tried to move it over itself. So that's why it didn't work. Um, the other thing that's useful here is you can also move it between your, between NERSC to your own resource. So I actually have this set up to work on my laptop. So there is a tool called um, Globus Connect Personal. So you just download that tool. Um, where you can, you click on Globus Connect down on their website, get Globus Connect Personal, and you just install it um, on your laptop, and it shows up as a little tool here. So this is basically hooked up to your laptop, and now I can move files between my laptop and Globus. So that's kind of a nice little way of getting data you know, from a big system down to your laptop, and you can have it all be managed. Um, and just to show you that this is actually happening, I'm going to move this file across. And in my home directory, you'll see this copy2.datch has, has showed up over here. So um, that was a little taste of Globus for you guys. So let's see, other tools and considerations. Yep. If you're transferring to a VPN that one of them is connected to a VPN, where would you want? Or no. Is there, um, is there an algorithm for deciding where to go at any point? So, so I think the really what you should do is use Globus if possible, because it'll just round robin between the DTNs. And okay. it, okay. yeah. So, so Globus just says NERSC DTN. If you use that, it'll take care of all the load balancing. Um, 
I think there's a mode where it'll even try and like stream the transfers if needed. So it'll basically, if you've got four different files you're moving, it'll try and hit all the different nodes to be able to maximize the bandwidth. So again, that's probably another reason why you want to try using Globus instead of just doing it yourself. Um, if, you if you do need to just log into a DTN node, that's fine. And just so you know, Globus uses Grid FTP under the covers as well. So, um, all right. So, yeah. So the, uh, well, we already talked about the DTNs. Um, it's got all the file systems mounted um, to transfer data. Uh, nuts. Done. To transfer data in and out of HPSS, you can use um, HSI and HTAR. Um, use the uh, a NERSC HPSS endpoint to, if, if needed. But if you, if you have the option, use HSI or HTAR. Hesham? Um, the, uh, the um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the endpoints are completely disconnected from each other. So whatever you authenticate to HPSS with, it'll um, log you into HPSS as your NERSC user. So when you initially, when we logged in, I gave it that username and password. That's the user it's going to go into NERSC as. So if I um, I'll go to the NERSC and use the DTN, so I can access my uh, scratch, scratch, and everything, right? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, yeah. You can access all your file systems. Project, Scratch, Home, everything, it's all in the DTN, so yeah. A um, couple of tips, use Globus for large automated or monitored transfers. You can use SCP to move files if needed. Um, typically, you want to do this for files that are under, under 100 megabytes, because if it gets too big, it's just going to sit and spin for a long time, um, which means you can't leave your laptop. You have to leave your window open. So. Um, it's also, SCP is going to be slower than Globus. So again, use it for small files. It's fine. But if you need managed transfers, use Globus. Um, we do tell people to not use the, D you do have login access to the data transfer nodes, but don't use them for doing other things. So don't compile your codes on the DTNs or don't um, use them to run other services. The whole point of them is to use them for data transfer. And it's a shared resource. So if you start misusing it, then you're, you're impacting other people's performance. Um, and you can still use regular copy to move things between file systems. Um, performance considerations. So I guess one thing we tell people is if you're seeing bad performance, chances are it's on the other side because our systems are pretty heavily tuned. But we will work with you to figure out where the issue is. And we'll put you in touch with the ESNet folks who are happy to debug performance issues and help you deal with that. Um, file system contention may be an issue. So sometimes you'll see um, the file systems are having problems, in which case things slow down. Don't use your home directory. Um, and if you're not getting the performance you need, go email consult at nurse.co. All right, so access for external collaborators. Um, we have a project area where you can basically Put your files in a www directory, and then it's visible on the web at this URL on portal.nurse.gov. Um, and you can even add some HTML and JavaScript to make it, make it look nice and sort of have a DIY web portal. Um, we have an an anonymous FTP site, which I'm not going to tell you about, but you can go and look at it if you need external partners to transfer data. Um, we have NERSC Science Gateways, which is, again, another way of getting your data out to people. So these are web portals which you, you can build to create sophisticated interfaces around your data. Um, we have a service called SPIN, which is a Docker-based uh, system that you can build these portals on. So you can ship your application in the container. It's connected to data on project. And now you can have this nice, sophisticated web app that serves up all of your information. Um, and you can Go, through, go to the docs.nurse.gov page and look at how to build science gateways, how to get started on SPIN. Um, but at a bare minimum, you can just put data in your www folder on project, and it becomes visible to the world. All right. Um, so for more information, you know, we've got a couple of links here. Uh, email us. 
If you have issues with Globus, you can email us, but we might tell you to just contact Globus support. Um, and that's it. Questions? All right, thank you very much.